What do you identify with? Hastings in Maine? 97th Street in Edmonton? Main Street in Winnipeg? Rose Street in Regina? Our people have to gravitate in the goddamn slum areas of this country. And they go there because that is where we are put. And the only place that we are allowed to live in the cities, unless we're a bureaucratic Indian, like myself, or unless we have somehow chosen to disregard our Indian heritage and say I'm white or I'm French. I have cousins that are blacker than Asa Spades and they're French now. <laughs> Beautiful people. Because they made some money and they don't, well, they don't talk Cree anymore. My cousins were raised by my grandmother who only spoke Cree. My uncle saw my cousin in the street, Times in East Town. Oh, I said, I'm sorry, Uncle Bill. I don't understand that language. That is how far he has gotten away from himself as a human being. We talk about oppression in other countries. And I think it's relative. I want to mention one thing here. We can say that there are isolated cases of people being put in jails, people being put in prisons in other countries, and we, oh my God, that is terrible. They're doing it in this country as well. In 1972 in Stockholm, I met a very intelligent human being. His name was Miguel Chase Sardi, who ran the Marindu Project in Paraguay. Because he was feeding information to the native people of Paraguay, he has spent the last six months in jail, persecuted and tortured, cut off from all communications, and in, and in, in, health, and in ill health. We have to know about those things. Why? Because they're happening in Canada as well. I know of five Indian leaders who are dead by violent deaths since my involvement in the last 10 years. And I know of more who are spending time in jail. I know of people who have died of ill health because of broken dreams. One man in Saskatchewan, Walter Lanigan. No one even knows who he is. No one gives a damn. He died in a hospital bed, a broken man, because he wanted to fight for the Aboriginal rights of his people. And even the people didn't give a damn until this core funding pro process came through. Now the government says, because of core funding, Native leadership has evolved. They gave us core funding because Native leadership was real then. And you had to buy us off some way. I can remember we were organizing in, 19, in, in, in the 60s. We used to borrow gas, gas money, hitchhike to go to meetings and organize. Christ, two years later, I was flying first class. Reeling drunk off a plane, hey, I'm here for the meeting. I'm the guest speaker tonight. I'm gonna tell you all about my land claims. Did nothing for the people who were still back in the reserves and the Métis settlements and colonies. Canada and the present and past Canadian governments have displayed political paralysis when they are trying to deal with native land claims. They have shown, they, they have effectively shown their inefficient methods of dealing with our land rights. The only thing that they could do was divide us. They've done that effectively. And I think that this whole forum here is a sham. And that Canada should not be hosting this, this conference. I think this conference should be held in Europe. Not here where people can't deal with land claims. Not hosted by a government 
that don't care about human settlements. The only human settlements they care about is where they can build their next city, how they can expand, who is going to exploit what and where and how. And they don't care if there's a poor white man living there or a poor Indian. If they want that land, they're going to expropriate it. I don't know why they're sitting downtown talking about it and saying all these nice little things to each other. Yes, geez, we have these Indians in Canada. Oh, yes, we have some in Paraguay as well. And we have some natives in, uh, in Africa. Oh, yes, we have some in Australia as well. And we're dealing with them. But how are they dealing with us? When 65% of the goddamn jail population in Canada is Indian men. And in Pine Grove, in the women's jail in Saskatchewan, at any given time, it's 95 to 100% Indian women. That's violence. People without a land base. People who cannot effectively and objectively get into economic development of any nature. Even economic development as far as supporting their own families. People suffering from ill health, dying of cancer and tuberculosis, institutional diseases that they never had before. Under this present system, the lack of education, the lack of meaningful recreation. We have a few ball teams around. Government funds a couple of powwows every year. That is what they do to us. You want to talk about violence? That's violence. When you deny any race of people the basic amenities of life, you are committing the worst kind of violence. And like Brother Bill just finished saying a while ago, they're going to stretch it out. At least the Nazis said, I wouldn't kill them goddamn Jews overnight. Turn on the showers. Or stoke up the ovens. They knew what they were going to do and they told the world about it. Hitler wrote his book Mein Kampf and he told everybody what he was going to do and he did it. But here they talk to you nice, they hold big meetings and they say, yes, we're dealing with the native people, but they're just throwing them in jail down the street. Indian women are whores. The boys are pimps. Thieves. In the cities. The ones who are working have completely sold out. I no longer identify as being an Indian. Now, I ask you, can you honestly sit there and not understand that type of violence. And they, you know, when they ask these questions, are you going to wage a war against us? Or are you going to, going to uh, do violent things and uh, blow up our bridges and burn down our towns? Maybe we should. Maybe we should. I can't stand here and give you a, a historical perspective in terms of legislation and everything. I could, off the top of my head. All the legislation I went through, but as I stated in the beginning, I refuse to talk about that anymore. I don't give a damn for treaties. I don't care for their Indian Affairs policy. Because the land that we're standing on is Indian land. The rest of it, right to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, is Indian land. Well, they killed the Beotox, so there's nothing there. You now, there's a few Mi'kmaqs living in the south of Nova Scotia that had to go over there. I mean, of Newfoundland. That's how they took that part of the country. Is that not violent? Is it not violent when some of your lawyers and executives ride through Skid Row to pick up young Indian girls? They do it. I've seen them. There's one respected lawyer who's well known in Canada. He used to come down in Skid Row and Regina in his car and pick up young whores. Nice young tenderloin. That's violence.